Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here, uh, coming to you again from the storage facility, respecting social distancing. Uh, it is late April now, and we're still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, very sad news coming out of uh, where I live today that the provincial or state parks are closed now until the end of May. Not really a surprise, given the current state of, of affairs. I really didn't think they'd be open for May. Um, but nonetheless, to get the official announcements, very disappointing. Uh, we had two trips planned for this month. Um, May for a lot of people kicks off the start of the season. The weather is amazing. Uh, not a lot of bugs, not too busy. And uh, so we need to take a moment of silence to mourn the loss of, uh, for us, at least two really amazing trips. Uh, we lost April, of course. Uh, so that's really cut down the season. Um, this is important. It's saving lives and this too shall pass, but still kind of sad. So to help with uh, taking the edge off of our jonesing for camping, I'm here with our trailer today to do a little bit of a repair for you. Um, we noticed late in the season last year that the power tongue jack, the switch which allows the uh, tongue of the trailer to go up and down, um, it wasn't working properly. You had to really mash down on the button to get it to work, and sometimes it wouldn't work at all. So I went to eTrailer.com, I'm not sponsored by them, um, and picked up this uh, new power switch. Now this is for a Ram electric jack. Um, I'll put the part number in the description below, but this is part EJ. 3520 PSW. Now this is not the switch for the light. This is the switch that actually um, allows, like I said, the, the tongue of the trailer to go up and down. Um, I've never performed this repair before, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's got uh, six blade connections and it looks like it snaps in just with a couple of little retaining clips. So we're going to take the cover off the power tongue jack. Uh, we do not have the battery connected. You want to make sure your 12 volt supply and your shore power is disconnected before you mess with this. And um, Let's change it out, see how it goes. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, this is our Ram Power Tongue Jack, amazing piece of equipment. I absolutely love this thing prior to it breaking, of course. We've got one switch which activates a uh, LED light, which shines light down in case you are uh, hooking up or unhooking at dark, or in the dark, I should say. And then this is the switch we've got the issue with, up to raise the tongue, down to lower it, and something inside of it is just not connecting properly. Uh, this is the screw top that you can remove to do the manual override. Um, I could just use the manual override. I don't know that it's really designed for that purpose. I think it's only in emergency situations where you have no power, and I don't want to screw up the gears in here. So priority is to change that switch. So the first thing we're going to do, there's a screw on this side and a screw on this side. There's also one on the back. So there's three screws that we're going to remove, and it looks like it's just a Phillips head. So uh, let's get to it, and we'll take those off first. Make sure I don't lose them. I'll just put them in the little tray here for the propane tank. Now I did have this cover off once, a long time ago, um, but it looks like there's a couple more screws underneath that I need to take out. Uh, they're Phillips as well to remove the cover. So I'm gonna do the same thing, take those out, and then we'll see if we can lift the cover off. All right, so we took out two uh, silver screws from underneath with the Phillips head, and now the cover is starting to come off. Now, one little caveat to this job is that in behind here, there's uh, some circuitry, and the wires that they've used to connect to this switch are very short. So, uh, first of all, you want to be careful you don't break the wires, because that would be a disaster. But secondly, I'd only recommend doing this job on a nice warm day. Uh, if you do it on a cold day and the wires are really stiff and brittle, you could snap the connections right off and that would suck. So we're just going to very, very carefully lift this up. And I'm going to pivot it forward. And uh, we'll bring the camera around here in a second to kind of show you what we're at. But what I'm going to need to do is get my fingers in there and try to release the switch from the back. There's two little tabs that you push down, and they're going to be a little stiff and brittle that we're going to try and squeeze down uh, to remove. So we'll uh, pause it here for a second, and I'll show you inside. All right. Not sure how well you're even going to be able to see this, but we've got the cover tipped off, and that's the back of the switch there. So this one on here is just for the light. That one is the one that we're replacing, and you can see on the bottom, there's a little tab that you can squeeze, and there's one on the top as well. I thought I was going to use needle nose pliers, but you know what? That switch is pretty big and I don't want to damage any of the wiring. But you can also see, like I said, they haven't really given you a lot of slack to play with. Um, 
probably could remove the wires on all sides, but what I want to do is push the switch out of the front so that I can see where all the connections are and I don't mess it up when I put it back together. So uh, let's give that a try and see if we can push it out the front. Okay, so as I suspected, this job was going to be a bit of a bitch, <laughs> pardon the language. Um, what we had to do was, this is the switch uh, which powers the LED lights. You can see the circuit board here with the little LED lights on the front. Uh, this has a negative and a positive connection, of course. Um, we had to disconnect that and then pop this switch out so that we could get access to the other switch. Now, you'll notice it's got two little tabs that you squeeze to push the switch out. It is a pain in the ass to do that because these are very stiff. That's good because this is not something you want to be popping in and out of your trailer on a regular basis. What I ended up having to do um, was push the bottom because I could only get my thumb around the bottom, pivot the bottom out and then reach up and push as hard as I could with my forefinger and pull from the outside to pull the switch forward. Uh, just be gentle with it. You don't want to rip off any of your blade connections. Um, you want to be very easy with it. So once I got this switch off and had a little more flexibility. Same thing again, I reached up inside the case, used my thumb to squeeze the bottom of our defective switch, pivoted the bottom out just ever so slightly, reached up and really mashed down with my fingers, you can't use any tools, there's no room, and was able to pop it out of the front. Now at this point, victory, yes, we've had some success, but I'm not going to start pulling this apart until I've taken some pictures um, or labeled on a diagram, but I'll just take pictures with my phone so that I make sure that the switch and the wire is all oriented exactly the same way. Of course, uh, these blade connections have never been taken off since it was at the factory. So again, you want to be very, very careful and sort of jiggle the connection as you pull it off. If you just grab the wires and yank, you could rip the wires right out of the back of the connection and that would be a disaster, especially because during the lockdown, access to hardware stores and equipment is a little bit limited. So uh, I'm going to very gently start taking these off. Um, I'm going to take a few off and see how easily it goes. And then I'll show you uh, me taking a couple more off. That way, if I screw it up, you're not listening to me swearing. So one little piece of advice I would give you, I've just about got this done. Um, we've got the new switches fully installed here. I hooked up the power a second ago to the battery and tested it and it works fine. Um, one of the things that I would really uh, be careful of is when you're removing these blade screws or blade connections, let me zoom out here and see if I can get that to focus. Come on, focus. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but there's like a little locking tab there. Um, if you have like a, a steak knife or, um, uh, you know, a little, um, any kind of little blade, you can sort of see if I can get that to focus more. So uh, just a little tip, it's very hard to see and it's blurred, but in the center of that blade connection, there's that little rectangular piece with a notch in it, which is almost like a little tab. If you can pull the uh, insulation back off of the connection and gently pry that up either with a very, very small flat blade screwdriver or the edge of a, a knife or something, it makes it a lot easier to remove these connections. The reason this job was a little more difficult was the first two I could pull the little shrink piece back and it wasn't a big deal. But if you look up inside there, the uh, insulation on those other spade connections is heat shrunk on. Uh, now if you were a pro, you'd probably cut that off, put a new one on, reconnect all the connections and then shrink it with a heat gun. I don't have that, that privilege and that luxury, um, but that definitely made it a much more challenging job to do because you, you've got to be very, very careful in the way that you pull them off. Also got to be very careful in the way that you reassemble them because you don't want them to easily fall off while you're driving down the road. So um, not a complicated job, not even necessarily a dangerous job, but definitely a pain in the butt. If you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, uh, get a tech to do it. But uh, we're just about done. We're going to put everything back together, do a final test, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right. So sore fingertips, a little bit of frustration. I did not swear. I might have said shit once. And I just did then too. Uh, so we put the case back on. I have not put the screws in it yet just because I want to be doubly sure that everything is working exactly the way that it should. I've got the battery all connected. Uh, so there's the light. Light is working beautifully on, oh, sorry, off, on, off, on. Perfect. Moment of truth. This is the new switch. Tongue up, tongue down, tongue up, tongue down. Yeah, it's nice and nice and smooth. In fact, I think this is better than the other switch ever was. The other one you had to really push down on it even from the day that we, we first had it. So I'll put the screws back in, the two in the bottom, three around the side, um, and then uh, that'll wrap this job up. Um, 
really, like I said, the prognosis for camping is not that great. It's hard to say when the season will start. This thing needs a wash. Um, the seals need to be inspected, but I need to use a relative's driveway for that. So uh, we'll have to wait until the quarantine is eased a little bit or until I can find a way to get creative and uh, maintain social distancing while maintaining the trailer. But uh, most of the fittings and fixtures inside have been replaced. Um, still got to replace the wheels. That is still to come. Um, but really, um, the agenda has very much slowed down because of this pandemic. But anyway, we're going to wrap this video up now. Um, the one thing I will say is if you've got experience using those blade connectors and you have any tips or hints or any advice on what I could have done to make this an easier job, or if there's anything I missed, put your insight and advice in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe and uh, stay safe. We'll talk to you later.